to handle good company, we go on a cruise to the Bahamas and show you, among other things, the great nightlife on board the ship. Also motivational expert. Z <laughs> I forgot his name. Am I okay? Am I okay? No. Zig Ziglar, the biggest motivational guru in the in the universe, is here, and I forget his name. Oh, you got it now, though. With how to be successful. And Lonnie Anderson, we're going to visit her house in Los Angeles. We'll take a look back at when we went there in her pre Burt Reynolds days. And a thousand and one free bows with Matthew Lesko, just ahead. My name is David. Just to remind you, there's only three good companies left until I get a full-time mom. Good fun, good brand, good times that never end. Talking about the good times, the good company. Good fun, good brand, good company. Today on Good Company, join us as we set sail on a cruise to the Bahamas aboard the Nordic Empress. Find out how you can get free stuff from the federal government. Plus, motivational speaker Zig Ziglar has advice on how to achieve success in your personal and professional life. Good fun, good friends, good company. And now, here are your hosts, the husband and wife team, Steve and Sharon. So relaxed. I, I can't believe that you do that. I wasn't relaxed. No, you weren't? <laughs> no. Were so you, you didn't nervous? Feel relaxed at all. Mm -hmm. I think that's a trick. You got to be able to be on, not be relaxed, and you still come off somehow as relaxed. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job. I guess it somehow looked that way, didn't it? Yeah, it kind of looked the way. It was kind of good. So everybody's asking us what we're going to do next. You know what we're going to do next. What am I going to do? You're going to be a full time mom. Yeah, for a while. And I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> Because <laughs> he doesn't care as much. <laughs> His dad is going to be out there somewhere. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Thanks, sweetie. Yeah, how do you Get did a you great out. job. We'll see you later, okay? Thanks. All right. Oh, I know. He's so big, isn't he? Everybody says, I remember when he was born. Like, I know. Uh, I do true. too. <laughs> well, great. nine years ago. Hey, today we have a real treat for you. Zig Ziglar's on the show. Zig Ziglar has spoken to, uh, well, he's logged over three million miles. He's talked with, who knows, you know, people all over the world. There is a reason that he is one of the most effective motivational gurus and has stayed up there as long as he has, because okay. he has a message that is singular, and we're going to find out about it. He has written a new book, and it is called Over the Top. And we are going to meet him in a second, but first, let's take a look at a clip from his best-selling video, How to Be a Winner. You know what positive thinking will do? Positive thinking will let you use your ability. And I'm here to tell you that is all you really need. Positive thinking won't let you do anything, but it will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Here he is. Welcome, please, Zig Ziglar. Good to have good to you see here. you again. Yeah, it's sure good to be here. Of course, getting my age, it's good to be anywhere. <laughs> well, you're not that old, are no, you? No, but my granddaughter thinks I'm so old. I remember when the Dead Sea was just sick, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still buying green bananas, uh, Steve, so I'll be if I've got a few. <laughs> That's optimism. You know, uh, so much of your speaking is about being successful. And I think our viewers can relate to this. Now, we've been doing this talk show for a lot of years. This show is coming to an end. Give us some insight about being successful in your terms, what you think real success is. Well, I think, uh, Steve, that success begins with the fact that when the people who know you the very best respect you the most, I think that's a yardstick of success. 
Number two, there are eight factors that everybody wants, and uh, money just happens to be one of them. Everybody wants to be happy and healthy and at least reasonably prosperous. They want to be secure and have friends and peace of mind and good family relationships, and they want to have hope. So when things change, what you do is you look at all eight, and you say, well, now, how many do I have left here? Mm -hmm. Now you've got something very positive to build on, and you need to remember that uh, everything that happens in life can be turned into an asset. A couple of things you say are essential to being truly successful. One is to be grateful. Yep. One is to be hopeful. Right. Speak to those for us. Which well, uh, you know, Hans Selye, the great stress specialist, says the healthiest of all human emotions uh, is the emotion of gratitude. And it's an absolute fact of life that the more you express gratitude for what you have, the more you'll have to express gratitude for. It's equally true that you more complain, the more you complain about the problems you have, the more problems mm -hmm. you will have to complain about. Uh, what you send out is what you get back. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite little things I do is I always greet people the same way, whether it's 9 in the morning or 9 at night, I always say, good morning. And 85% of the people, 9 o'clock at night, will respond, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> and they'll, really? Then they'll instantly say, well, it's not morning. Yeah. I say, then why would you say morning? They said, because you said morning. I said, that's an interesting point. You go out in life looking for friends, they're scarce. You go out in life to be a friend, mm. you'll find them everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and what I'm saying is what you send out, what you get back. And being hopeful? Well, John Johnson, I think, expressed it best. He was born in a shotgun house with a tin roof in Arkansas City, Arkansas. Uh, he, he really had a tough uh, life today. Uh, John Johnson is one of the 400 wealthiest men in America, publishes Ebony Magazine, has his own cosmetic company and all those other things. And Johnson put it this way. He said, your success in life is not determined by the color of your skin, the place of your birth, or who your parents were. It is determined by the size of your hope. Mm -hmm. Now, hope, according to the dictionary, is realistic expectations. And psychologically, we know that our expectations have a direct bearing on what happens in our life. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to have those expectations real share in what we got to do, we got to plan for them and prepare for them. Then we can legitimately expect them to happen. Mm -hmm. You have said in your new book that one of the biggest mistakes people make is they don't act, they just talk. That's and correct. it's a huge error. Tell us about that. Well, one of my favorite uh, stories is Jerry Arrowwood, uh, who when I was in the cookware business was my helper. She washed the dishes, she cleaned the kitchen, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Very shy. She had been baking cakes and taking in sewing to earn a living. One night I got caught in a jam and I said, Jerry, you got to help me. What do you want me to do? I want you to deliver these six sets of cookware that I've sold tonight and teach people how to use them on their own stoves. She was scared to death. Oh, she said, I can't do it. She finally agreed to do it because I was in a jam. The first couple welcomed her very enthusiastically, told her how professional she was, how personable she was, and uh, uh, that set a trend. Bottom line is that she got interested in growth and learning things. Five years later, she was the vice president in charge of sales training of a multi-million dollar cosmetic company and was the only woman to be unanimously elected as an officer by the board of directors. It was inside of her all the time. See, motivation is the spark that lights the fire of knowledge. To motivate is to pull out that which is on the inside. And the hope, Sharon, uh, really comes from the fact that as long as we understand as people that failure is an event, it's not a person. That yesterday really did end last night. Uh, today is a brand new day, and it is your day. See, I was broken in debt when I was 45 years old. Really? Absolutely. And I'd worked hard all of my life. I've always been optimistic. You know, I'm the kind of guy that take my last $2 and buy a money belt. I mean, uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that's my nature. Uh, yeah. uh, but that wasn't getting it. Positive thinking and hard work are very important. But, man, unless you've got that hope, 
and that hope is really built on the image, the picture you have of yourself. Mm -hmm. You are going to be signing your book in the Twin Cities? Absolutely. Uh, we, and also, there is the book. The signing is tomorrow at 7 o'clock at Barnes & Noble. Which Barnes & Noble is it? Minnetonka. Minnetonka. Okay. Well, that should be exciting. Also, on Thursday, what is tomorrow, Thursday? Thursday, well, Thursday, right. isn't that, big tomorrow event. is the big deal, isn't That's it? That's yes. right. Wow, uh, the big super event. Where is that taking place? Uh, it's taking place, I believe, at the uh, Target, Target Center. Uh, the Target Center? Target Center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got Colin Powell and Lou Holtz and Robert Schuler and Peter Lowe and just, uh, it, it's going to be a motivational smorgasbord. <laughs> Should be I good. I guarantee you there's going to be something for a everybody. Banquet. I bet there will. All yeah. right. Thank you, Zig. Good to see you again. It's good, good to see you again. Nordic Empress. We were on this, on that ship this last weekend along with our whole good company staff. We call it the Aloha Cruise. We had a chance to go off and uh, experience the Bahamas together. Have you ever heard of cruising just on the weekend? It, it is done. I guess it used to be done on, you know, bad cruises, dumpy kind ships. Of older ships, I think. You know, yeah. boy, has it changed. This is really a classy operation. Right. Royal Caribbean has put some of their most beautiful ships on this, this tour. And it's a wonderful chance to experience uh, cruising. If you're not sure you want to go out for a whole week or a whole two right. weeks on a cruise it's ship, short. you can get on this beautiful ship and experience what it's like to cruise in the Bahamas and the whole area around southern Florida there. Um, and you're back in three or four nights, depending on which cruise right. you take. So we thought we'd give you a feel for what this is all about as we took our old gang uh, down to the Bahamas. <laughs> weekend cruise on what is a beautiful and fun ship. That's right. One of the newest and most luxurious ships in the Royal Caribbean line. This is a good way to kind of sample cruising without taking a whole week. Right, because we're only going to be gone for three days, but we still get all the activities and some great ports along the way. And they sure pack a lot into those three days. Passengers gather to party here on the deck in the sun before the ship sets sail for its island destination. The Nordic Empress sails to two different Bahama destinations during its three and four day cruises. It's for people who want to get a feel for cruising. The first thing you see is this beautiful atrium near the purser's desk. Glass elevators with gold trim and even a piano player for your enjoyment. The glass elevators lead to the duty-free shops. You don't even have to leave the ship to buy souvenirs, jewelry, liquor, perfume, and china. Most passengers stay in standard rooms, which can be bright if they have an outside window, but they are quite small. Just two couches that convert into beds for the evening. These run about $600 for the weekend. But passengers who want to splurge a little should check out the Royal Suite. It goes for about $1,600 per person for the weekend. Ooh, now this is the Royal Suite. This is the nicest cabin this on the is, I think this is the biggest one on the ship. This is yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. A few rooms here. Take a look through this. Oh, a nice wooden door here. Goes into the master bedroom. Big, beautiful window. Lots of nice wood. Dressing area. And here's something you never see on a cruise ship. A walk-in closet. 
This is huge with a dresser inside. Now, another problem on cruise ships usually is the bathroom because, you know, there's hardly even elbow room. But take a look at this. I mean, this is just like home. Well, better than home, actually. It's all marble. It's beautiful with a shower there and your very own jacuzzi tub. Hmm. That would be nice after the party, but I think people who have this suite probably get to know a lot of people on board, or maybe they bring some with them, because look at all the room there is here for a party. A dining room table that seats at least six. Isn't this unbelievable? Yeah. And look at this. If you come over here, it has a bar area. We have your order, sir. Do you want it one at a time or all at once? All at once, please. Thank okay. you. We're in kind of a hurry. <laughs> and if you come over here, you will notice they have a large screen TV here, a Mitsubishi fine brand. And take a look at this. They have VCR player. They got CD players. They got things I can't even figure out what they are. Look at over here. A beautiful sitting area so you can relax with your friends and just chat about, you know, your sales around the world. And this is the killer. You get your very own sun deck. I have never seen this outside of any room Aww. this size. Beautiful view. The sun is on you. You can play half the game of shuffleboard. You have so much room. It's and all this go. can be yours if the price is right. Well, now, most people don't spend a lot of time in their cabins because there are so many activities to take advantage of on the ship. You ready? For what? Four shots for $5. Oh, you mean skeet shooting? Yeah. No. You don't want to do no, it? No, I'm not ready. Well, is this fun? I mean, this is loud. You have to hold your ears. It hurts. You end up. It hurts your shoulder. This is a good time for you? I think you get it. <laughs> That's part of the fun? No. What's no, the there's bet? something going on in there that I'd much rather do. What's that? Line dance lessons. Okay, she's going to do line dance. I'm going to do skeet. Good luck. You too. Pull. This one's going down. Oh. Yeah, there you go there. Got it. I'm nervous. Call. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I keep changing it on me. Oh. Oh. Based on my ski performance, I am now joining Sharon's dance line. Thank you. something a bit more rigorous, check out the Ship Shape Workout Center. Now, you might not think of this. This is their exercise room. People can work out in the life cycles, and these are not models. These people are really going for it, and they've come in at the very beginning of this cruise to do sit-ups and this thing. Not me. Uh, Over here, we have a very attractive woman. Getting ready for dinner here. I hear they have lots of meals on this cruise. Yeah, what are you up to? Yeah, well, you know what? What? If I had a view like this at home, I might even get into exercise. What do it you is, think? It is very it's pretty. Spectacular. And after you work out, you can enjoy a little pampering as well. As they have a whirlpool to relax in, women can have their nails done and even get a massage. Well, you can take advantage of the activities or you can just relax. But in any case, cruising is a lot of fun. It's great to meet people, but I think our favorite time was just hanging out with our staff. You know, there is nothing like a cruise for real memories. That's true. And we decided, since it was our last cruise together, we were going to get the whole good company staff together and get a picture taken, all of us. And so we asked this fellow if he'd take a picture. He was kind enough to say yes, as long as um, his friends could be in it, too. <laughs> so this is it. Bye. Bye.
that's out there you can get just by writing a letter. Matthew Lesko knows. He's going to tell us all about it in just a moment. But first of all, we have a half-price deal for you, and you can get it for dinner today, lunch tomorrow, dinner tomorrow. It's at Rudolph's Barbecue, always one of our favorite super bargains. Rudolph's is specialized, of course, in barbecued ribs, chicken, and uh, beef. And the deal is on a favorite of theirs and ours, too, their double feature dinner. It's a quarter chicken, four spare ribs served with coleslaw, that great coleslaw, french fries, and toast. Usually that's $10.95, and if you go in today or tomorrow at any of their locations, you can get it for half price. This is dining or takeout only. They won't deliver for the half price. You're going to have to get it yourself. Rudolph's Barbecue has three locations, Franklin and Lindale in Minneapolis, 815 East Hennepin Avenue in Minneapolis, and also Galtier Plaza in St. Paul. Be sure to ask for the good company super bargain. Get that great meal at Rudolph's half price today and tomorrow. Steve? Now take a look at this beautiful cat. A nice picture of a cat. Got to cost something, right? No, it doesn't. You can get this and a thousand and one other things for nothing from the government. And Matthew Lesko is a guy that knows all about it. He has written a book, 1001 Free Goodies and Cheapies. Stuff the government gives to anyone, the one and only Matthew Lesko. Uh, you don't know who this cat is? No. I mean, this is not just a cat. This is Socks the Cat. The? Right, this is Socks the, the Cat. Clinton the Clinton Cat. House. Right. So you, you call the White House, you know, or write them, and they'll send you Socks the Cat for free. I mean, they have so, actually, they have two different pictures of Hillary they'll send you for free and two different hairdos. You know, that's no it. kidding. Right, right. You but you anything. framed it. Yeah, they don't yeah, send no, you right. Frame. This is my frame. But another neat thing at the White House, you What's get, that? if you have a friend in the hospital or someone sick, you can contact the White House. They'll send them a get well card. Really? Right. <laughs> Perfect. Let's I think do that's that. Right. That's, good. Yeah. that's great for your Republican friends, you know. You get <laughs> okay. and it's Bill and Hill that that that, uh, that signs it. Or if you have you a get new it face, fast enough. Uh, well, a couple of weeks usually. I mean, I'd allow that too. It's not bad. Yeah. Or if you have they a should new... stay sick for a while. You know? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's, it's okay. better than a plant. You know, it probably you <laughs> know right. it dies before they get out of the hospital. The plant, not the patient. Right. Yeah, and uh, right. you know, another thing they have is if you have a new baby, mm -hmm. you know, or a friend that has a new baby, they'll send them a congratulatory note from the White House. You know? Great. Right. Or like your boy. Like, is your boy in Cub Scouts David, or yes, something? He is David? Cub. Okay. Now, David, when you go into Wee Blows or something like that, right. see, you could you could call contact the White House and they'll say David, signed by Bill. You know, congratulations, David, for becoming a Wee Blow or whatever it is. That yeah. is right. Great. I know. It's stuff you can't get. Oh, here, David, you know what my kids love? I got a nine year old at home, too. And see, these are free posters you can get from the government. Now, they love the snake poster. You know? I mean, I, I, I'd be up all night if this was in my room. <laughs> but my kids love this. Here's another one neat for kids. See, you can decorate your office, your home, your kids' room. Look at these wonderful animals of the night, you know, from uh, the government. And well, you I mean, just send in and they'll yes, send them to you? Yes, just call and they give you a whole stack of these things. Think of the beautiful birds, you know. Uh, oh, you got that? Or actually, be a fisherman friend. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, a lot of people uh, like fishing. Fish in North America. And then here's one of my favorite here of uh, Sitting Bull. This is from the Smithsonian Institution. Oh, that's a wonderful Very photograph nice. you could get. Videos. You get videos on everything. Uh, Where well, you video, get free videos? Yeah, free videos, free loan videos, for, and even cheap videos like these. I got brand new videos from the government for like five, six bucks a piece from an auction. But you get free videos. You're, you're an artist. You could get like hundreds almost of free videos on all the famous masters. Here's one on uh, Alexander Calder, Go Gone. Actually, they have a neat uh, collection of. Like, if your boy wants to buy a puppy, do you have a dog at home? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Not yet. Uh, when you ask Dad for a doggy and he says, Oh, he's, oh, 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 oh Dad, yeah, Dad, yeah, yeah, we got Right, as long as he doesn't sleep with right. us, that whole thing, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you call the government office called the, uh, it's an information coming house on animal welfare. Mm -hmm. They'll send you a free video on how to buy a puppy. Really? Yeah, right, exactly. Is right. it good? Yes, I mean, it tells you the responsibilities that kids really have to have when they buy a puppy. They have another free uh, video out there on mm -hmm. how to massage a cat. Right. <laughs> which right. department? Which yeah. department sends that out? That's actually I mean, at the. Uh, that's the uh, Department, department of Defense. Ag right, right, probably. Yeah. Or actually, you know, like my kid, uh, uh, my boy, I have a nine-year-old and twelve-year-old. I get a lot of stuff. This is on American Indians. This yeah. is all the stuff they said when they uh, did a report on American Indians. You call the government. You get this free report on American Indians. You know anything? Actually, uh, my boy did another one on Egyptian pyramids. Yeah. You know, the, actually, he was doing one on, on what was it? Uh, why? Uh, what is it? The trees, poplar trees. He had to know, like, when did poplar trees start? You know, a nine-year-old question. Right. We went down the library and looked all over, couldn't find an encyclopedia. Called the government. Actually, there's a tree, uh, tree expert here. They sent us this big poster of how a tree grows, 
Plus, he contacted the poplar tree expert. This guy talked to him for like 20 minutes on the phone. Uh, a poplar tree started right after the Jurassic Age uh, and all that stuff is free. Here, uh, on astronauts, my kids love astronauts. Here's a free book describing all the astronauts. Hey, Actually, wait a minute. Yeah. We will figure that yeah. this is all great stuff, yeah. but it would take forever yeah. to get any of it. <laughs> but they, they'll lose our letter, they'll ignore what we're going to say. Isn't that the truth? Well, I mean, that may happen. You know, I mean, that happens when I go to the store, too. You know, they screw me up. But generally, you can get it fairly oh, yes. No, I mean, any, like, here's books. Like, your kid, my boy, you know, I say, I love teaching with my kid at home. You know, yeah. but here, teaching your kid to learn to read. Why call that 800 number? You know, A, B, C, D, whatever. This is from the government, Department of Education, the best experts around. Teaching your te kids to learn history. Responsible behavior. Maybe I'll save that for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> teaching your kids uh, how to learn math, how to learn science, all this stuff for free. Coloring books from the government. Uh -huh. Here's a free uh, bird book. Actually, I just ran out of this, and they're going to uh, reprint it again. Look at my kids and I sit with it's this nice in the kitchen book. table. Right here, Glossy. a free book on how to start a country in. You want to study history? Man, here, you get the uh, copy of the Israeli peace agreement. You know, why read about it? Here's Simone Paris' signature <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. You know, all that kind of stuff. You know, here, oh, here's a neat free thing. Remember this poster? Let's you get see. this from the government. You know, uh, oh, Presley, you're kidding. They right, said right, out. exactly. And actually, I got a, a, a copy of the letter that uh, Elvis wrote to Nixon, how he wanted to become a drug czar or something like that. Yeah, this. that's right. He wanted to exactly. an appointment to the right. government. And it sounds like he's illiterate or something when you read this thing. Other things that uh, you could get like, oh, here's a picture What's of the this? photo. My kid didn't believe I was in the, uh, the Vietnam War. Yeah. You know, I'm 50 years old or something. He's like nine, you know, Vietnam, Vietnam. So I went to the government, got a picture of the boat I was on. You know, what did you do on this government. boat? I was a navigator. You know, we got lost all the time though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got it. Matthew's book is available through that 800 number, 800 Uncle Sam, the one and only Matthew Lesko. Here it is, 1,001 three goodies. back to the Nordic Empress in just a moment to show you what goes on at night on a cruise ship. First, a really unusual super bargain for you. This is an opportunity to go flying at Flying Cloud Airport where you can be behind the control for half price, for part of the flight. Scary. The idea here, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the idea here is kind of a Father's Day treat. There's a place called American Flight. They will give you a half hour of flight time for half oh. price and the participant will actually get to fly the aircraft. Uh, American Flight is a flight training facility located at Flying Cloud at Eden Prairie. They have a staff of seven federally licensed instructors, nine aircraft, and the deal is on a half-hour flight where you actually get to fly the aircraft. Normally, and of course, you are supervised by a certified flight instructor who has, you know, a good sense of humor, but not that great, okay? <laughs> but in, and, Who's in the same plane uh, you are, I hope. Oh, he's talking to you from the, you know, from the ground. <laughs> yeah, sounds like you're doing well up there. And uh, anyway, so what you do is you, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see if you have to go out there. You have to call today. That's right. You have to call today and tomorrow and ask for the super bargain. You'll get it for half. I'd like to do that. I bet this is to get people interested in flying, right? You would like to do get some seriously? flying lessons. I'd like to do that. Yeah. Okay. I've always thought it'd be fun to learn. Yeah, to Sharon fly a plane. yesterday went to the Mall of America and did the flying. What's it called? Flying Yellow Eagle. Screaming yellow. Screaming eagle. yellow eagle. You know the thing that goes around and to the roof. And yeah. So now again? I figure I'm so ready to fly. So now she wants to fly. <laughs>
<laughs> right. That was her first that. screaming yellow eagle. We did the flume. I'd never been on the flume out there. But it yeah. was, yeah, anyway, it was a, anyway, we're going to take you back to the Caribbean right now, to the, rather to the uh, Bahamas on the Nordic Empress, because when you're on a ship, if, you, if you've cruised, you know that usually the ships go, uh, they travel at night, and then they stop at the ports during the day. That means you've got to do something at night while you're on the ship. Well, they have plenty of things for you to do, lots of nightlife, including lots of food and things to do, shows to see, places to dance. Gary went along, and he's going to show us what he found at night on the cruise ship. Well, everybody, that's right. It's uh, back on the Nordic Empress right now. It's nighttime, which means that the fun and games around the pool are, uh, are no more. The swimsuits are uh, off. Everybody is dressed up a little bit more and having a, a wonderful dinner. And that is just the beginning of a whole, um, well, a whole series of nighttime activities. Oh, yeah, when you're cruising at night, uh, when, uh, when the sun goes down, the joint starts jumping. a gourmet feast every night. All sorts of wonderful choices, and the wait staff anticipates your every wish. They treat you like royalty. Yes, dinner is indeed a great way to kick off the night's activities on board the ship. And then afterwards, people can move to the Carousel Pub, where inside, on this night, it was karaoke. Well, no question about it, karaoke is always fun. And here on the ship, uh, uh, well, I think it's even more fun. I mean, people are definitely in a festive, playful, uh, fun time mood. It, it works really well. Of course, on the other hand, if you, if you really don't want to be part of the show yourself, they've got entertainment where you can just sit and watch. Now, if you like Vegas style, song and dance extravaganzas, well, you're going to love what happens here in the Strike Up the Band Lounge. Big production numbers featuring extremely talented singers and dancers with all the costumes and choreography, too. There's a different show every night. This one was called simply Get Dancing. Speaking of Vegas, there's a casino on board featuring all the action of Las Vegas. Now, that's another fun place to drop into in the evening, and who knows, you just might win enough to pay for the cruise. And lastly, of course, there is a disco. It's a great one. It's called the Viking Crown Lounge. And as you can see, it's a happening kind of place. Well, having a lot of fun in there, you know, and after sitting around watching all the entertainment, all the shows, this is a good change of pace, a chance to get a little activity and a, a little dancing. They go well into the night, and uh, once again, it's called the Viking Crown. Now, it's a place where, oh, wow, look here. Uh, hold, 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 hold a second. I got some people going in right now. Look, at they're all dressed alike. Uh, what's, uh, how come you're all dressed the same? Elise's bachelorette. Elise, oh, it's a bachelorette party. Yeah. Where are you guys from? New Orleans. From New Orleans? Yay. Oh, that's a great idea. New Orleans. And you're going to go in there and dance? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, okay, well, go ahead. You, you'll have a good time when you go in there. So, no, okay, I think you should go. I'm going to go. Uh, I, guess, I guess I'm dancing. And so the next thing I knew, I was back in the lounge dancing with all the bachelorette party women from New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Nightlife on the Nordic Empress. You gotta love it.
person in her home. But first, Super Bargain number three, it's a cheeseburger deal at the Lion's Tap. Very popular cheeseburgers. Flying Cloud Drive in Eden Prairie. Hey, on your way out to the flight lesson, That's you might right. as well get, get yourself a burger. a burger, huh? Not a bad idea. On the way home, maybe. <laughs> what? <laughs> a fine idea, yeah. let me tell you. Lion's Tap was selected in 91 as one of the top 500 restaurants in the country. Think about that. Anyway, their burger is a hot burger. There it is. Limit of two per person. If you want more than that, hey, think about it. But anyway, uh, they were $2.30. If that is not enough, how about a buck fifteen? I think that's a really good Do you deal. like it? I there do, it is. Lion's Tap. Ask for the super bird. There are two women that seem to be on every single magazine as they're checking out at the grocery store, right? Oprah Winfrey and Lonnie Anderson. It's yes. amazing. Lonnie's telling us, you know, how she took it off, how she put it on, how she got it back together, how it <laughs> fell apart. I don't know. <laughs> She's got something about everything. She is really out there. But anyway, it was years ago when we first started Good Company. We went to Los Angeles because I knew Lonnie when she was here. Right. She used to be an actress here in the Twin Cities. And she let us go into her home. This is when she was just starting to date Burt Reynolds. She wouldn't talk about it publicly, but we talked about it behind the scenes. So this is a chance for us to look back at Lonnie in those years before Burt. Let's look. This is Lonnie's home in the hills of the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles. I knew Lonnie when she lived here in Minnesota, so I was looking forward to our reunion. Oh. <laughs> I thought you coming. Now, Papa, have you come to visit my prison? Yes, I okay, have. I'm Let me in. <laughs> more gorgeous than ever. Oh, hi. <laughs> so good to see you. You can't come in. <laughs> Since this is my first visit to Lonnie's house, she wanted to show me around. So we started our tour right here in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, Lonnie, that's gorgeous. Oh, thank Tell you. Tell me about that. Thank you. That's an iCart. And um, I was looking for the Four Seasons, and then I came upon these, and I wanted something restful and, and feminine. And it's the Morning Star, the Evening Star, the Pole Star, and the Moon. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? <sighs> beautiful. You know, I read in People magazine that you have 70 pair of shoes. At least. Do you really? <laughs> I have shoes in every closet in this house. Oh, let's see. And in this closet, I have a lot of them. And I have things that go with nothing. I mean, I just, just buy the shoes, them? and then I say to my wardrobe lady, let's make something to go with these shoes, because they're so fabulous. And they're everywhere, <gasps> boots and shoes, oh, and, and aren't those pretty? So gorgeous. Now, those are one of the things I, I had nothing to go with. Have you even worn them? Yeah. We finally made an, a gypsy outfit to go with it that's perfect. really perfect. Why do you need so many gowns? Because I can only wear everything one time. And then uh, people comment if you wear it a second time. And so now I just wear them once, and I either give them to charity, or uh, friends of mine come over here, and if they need a gown for something, and Dee Dee's friends do come prom shopping now. In I think I'll become a registered charity. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's who was. Uh, what's next? Oh, closing up. After the tour, Lonnie and I got a chance to yes. sit down and talk and look through some old photographs she had. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at these. This oh, is this what is me. See, now I finally got hair. I didn't have any hair until I was two. And then I got a mass of dark curly hair on my head, and this is the beginning of it. Oh, how about fresh yourself. Yeah. Where were you born? In St. Paul, Minnesota. This is me in the fourth grade. And uh, you notice everyone has their hair like this, bangs and two Oh, yes, yeah, wasn't that was... attractive? Were you a good student? <laughs> yes, I was a very good student in the things I liked. Oh, and this is my senior prom. Oh, Remember my the, the gosh, look behind. at the hairdo, um, yes. Yeah, this is 1962, and uh, boy, white lipstick and teased hair. What do we have to this guy? Like he, you know, I think he's married and has several children. And, Eating and his heart out. You know, <laughs> I should have told us to her that night. I don't think so. I think he's probably really happy that he didn't. <laughs> oh, and then this was when I was uh, first runner-up to Miss Minnesota. How old? I was uh, 18. It was the same year that I got married, divorced, and had my daughter. Some year. All happened in this year. This was a year. You described yourself in an article I read as a controlled, driven, and insecure person. Uh-huh. Isn't that, Is that a correct Strange, word? yeah. And insecure, always. No. Mm-hmm. Are you insecure? What could you possibly be, have to be insecure uh, Well, about? you know, you know how you get the uns? You know, you're unattractive, untalented, unloved, unpleasant. Well, me, yeah, yes. Yeah, right. you. <laughs> I get them, I get them. <laughs> and a lot of the time, I don't feel very attractive. Now, oh, I grew Ronnie. up... I grew up, everyone laughs, uh, with a family who thought perhaps telling you you were pretty would give you a swelled head. You'd get conceited. Mm -hmm. So everyone made sure they didn't tell me. So I thought perhaps I was gross, you know. <laughs> I didn't know. Is there anything you thought stardom would be that it's not? The kind of star I wanted to be, I'm not. I wanted to be 
like Helen Hayes. Very respected by your peers, always working, lovely, wonderful, but maybe not a household name. Maybe not where people went, eh, when they saw you or anything. Not that kind of fame. I noticed that the Inquirer does no articles on Helen Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> and that's kind of what I had in mind for myself. The good working actress, solid. Mm -hmm. You know, and not, not so much this um, glamour, uh, the sex symbol stuff. I didn't expect any of that. Frankly, this was just last weekend. We flew down to Miami to take advantage of this cruise, and we're surprised that this is a full house. These cruises, even at this packed. time of year, are packed, packed with people. What is all the excitement about, and what does it really cost? This is what we're going to find out with George Wozniak, our travel expert. Well, if we have whet your appetite about cruising, now it's time to find out the specifics of some of these cruises. We have George Wozniak with us from Hobbit Travel, who knows everything, everything. about cruises from the Twin Cities. Welcome. How are you, Steve? Good. Our last cruise? Yes. Yeah, yes. the Aloha Cruise. I know, I know. What a fabulous ship, though, huh? This is a nice Beautiful. one. We thought that the shorter cruises over the weekend maybe had the ships that weren't as good, but this one right. is gorgeous. You know, and that's true, because they used to be that way. And Royal Caribbean was the first company to take a brand new ship and put it in the three, four day market. All the time, for many, many years, those were kind of the tubs. And I'm yeah. not saying the ships still in that market are tubs, but these guys were very, very successful at taking their best, putting it in the three, four day market. And I call this ship kind of a Miggy, a mini mega ship. Because? It's got, well, you know, the megas were like the Sovereign of the Seas, the Nordic Right, Empress with the stuff. big uh, center right. area like this, and the they've, newer. And they've duplicated mm -hmm. that with this ship but a little bit smaller. This ship holds 1,600 passengers. It's a little bit less than a football field long, but it still has two swimming pools, three whirlpools. It has its own spa on board, plus a fitness center. So they've tried to duplicate all of the amenities of the seven-day cruise and put it quickly on a three- and four-day rotation mm -hmm. and still hitting on a three-day cruise two ports of call and on a four-day cruise four ports of call. So on, on board, you mentioned some of the activities. What are some of the other things? The, the well, full have, range this of has actually a children's program too so it's ideal for families uh -huh. for single parents for couples they they have babysitting services available the children's program starts at about five years old and works all the way up into the teens and they have different activities that go believe it or not to one o'clock at night so you can do all of wow. the entertainment things while you're on board with your children so there's just a I mean you know plus the normal wonderful food skeet shooting you know you used to hit golf balls off the back of the ship basketball you know toss the all that still in the too pool. all of those things are yeah. available but they just do it very very quickly mm -hmm. captain's cocktail party which is always the second night which is uh, you know tomorrow night so they have absolutely duplicated as much as they possibly can in a confined you know obviously space of time huh why would people want to take just a weekend or three or four day cruise? Well, the first thing is, is people that are, you know, saying seven days, there's no way. I mean, I, I you know, I don't know Cooped if I up. like it. Yeah, the little cabins, you know, is there enough to do? Uh -huh. All of those things. So this is perfect to so-called, you know, maybe get your feet wet on a cruise. Mm -hmm. And uh, three days, ideal. Price, it's less expensive than a seven day cruise. And uh, I think that 
for people that can't take a week off. But then you wonder, how far can I get in four days or three days? What are the ports like where well, they stop on this ship? Fortunately, cruising out of Miami on a three-day cruise, you have some choices. First of all, this ship tomorrow will land in Nassau at 8 mm -hmm. o'clock tomorrow morning. Nassau is probably one of the premier colonial old English-type islands that was controlled by the English for many years. It has straw markets, probably the biggest I've ever been to, their straw market. I mean, they're famous for it. Uh, rides on uh, horseback, beautiful beaches if you don't want to shop. The shopping is not as good as St. Thomas in those areas, but still they have all the H.R. Stern, all those things for porcelain, China, all of those things. Plus the nightlife, <laughs> and casinos. The night, then they have their casinos, so if you want to uh -huh. say, forget the sun, forget the beaches, I want to go gamble, they have two casinos, one in Nassau and one in Paris. And the ship Island. stays late, so you can gamble. Well, it stays until about 5 or 6 o'clock, but you can mm -hmm. gamble all afternoon because they're open 24 hours a yeah. day. Uh -huh. And then where does it go? Then it goes to Coco Cay which sounds, always has sounded a little corny to me, this outer island experience, but our CCL Royal Caribbean leases this island from the Bahamas, so the only people there are the people on this ship, mm -hmm. and it's the Robinson Crusoe experience, the, the outer island, the beaches, and barbecue on the beach. You know what it also does? What's that? People that normally will never snorkel, because they won't make time for it, it's, ah, you know, kind of forget it, I'd good. rather go shopping. Uh -huh. You're almost forced into doing some unusual things. And believe it or not, when they question people coming back off these cruises, they say, what was the highlight of it? You know what they're saying? The Outer Island experience. Because no, snorkeling okay. with life jackets on so that you don't feel like you're going to sink, seeing wonderful marine life, which the Bahamas is famous for. Uh -huh. And then they have sailing and kayaking and all kinds of water sports. So it's really a day out on the beach, but your own private little island, Robin Crusoe style. So it's fabulous. Cost-wise, is this? this? Yeah, this ship is not cheap but it really shouldn't be. This is the best that you're gonna find in the three and four day market. It, by the way, is probably $100 more, $150 more than the middle run, but you're looking at cruise only, $400 to $425 for a three day. I think we're getting ready to go. We're I think, it's we're, I think we're leaving. The interview. I think so. <laughs> well, this might be our last yeah. cruise, but if you want to take a cruise, Hobbit Travel has all the information, and George is the guy that can put it together. It's been Thanks, wonderful, buddy. you guys. Hey, you're good. I'm going to miss it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We'll miss you. Thank you. Oh, it's my wife. Happy I know. Cruising. Thanks. <laughs>
Accommodations for the cast and crew of Good Company provided by the Bell Harbor Beach Resort in Miami. Located in the heart of exclusive Bell Harbor Village, the resort offers guests an unlimited variety of leisure activity. Water sports, golf, tennis, and world-class shopping just steps away. The Sheridan Bell Harbor Resort is one of nearly 500 Sheridan hotels, which provide superior facilities and quality service to business and leisure travelers in more than 65 countries throughout the world. To make your reservations, call area code 305-865-7511.